The next speaker, I was going to say, take your time, but I better not say that. Uh, and I got a hook. But <laughs> well, here we go, uh, brother. Rubber nicely. Come on in, preacher. We'll be about there. Uh, I'm going to pray today for our local government and their uh, national government. And I also want to pray for uh, UN uh, leaders. And, uh, they might get things right in the Lord. And uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity today to come to you in prayer for our uh, local government officials, uh, our state government officials, our federal government, and even our UN, UN representatives. And even the government, even the workers who work in the government. I pray that our officials will come to join, come to you in prayer, asking for guidance, strength, courage, and to use the Bible as their guidelines in decision making. I pray that we the people will continue to support them, holding them to a higher standard. Like the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if we will humble ourselves and pray and seek God's face and turn from our wicked ways, then God will heal our land. Amen. All these things I pray in Jesus' name. But before I, before I uh, close dear God, I want to uh, pray for a good friend of mine, Randy Carroll, who this day found out that he had uh, blood clots, uh, tumors in his in his brain. Just be with him, dear God, and hold him close and heal him to be your will, dear God. I love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The next person needs no introduction. He's been here almost as long as the courthouse has been here. Uh, the Lord used him to lead two other pastors uh, to be a pastor that's up here today. So y'all know him, so I won't even tell you his name. And when y'all see him, just holler out his name. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Jesus said something very significant that we must take to bed with us, rise up to, and not forget off the day long. He said we're two of us. Agree when we ask, meaning for what we ask, God will move. And God wants to hear that agreement. So wherever you're being led in prayer, we're just pooling our faith. He says, uh, where two or three of us gather, He's right here. So if you'll just, just, just send up your faith, and I send up my faith, and the other pastors do the same. If you haven't already. Let the Lord know you really believe Him. Yeah. You really trust Him. You're really looking for something. You're expecting something. And in that agreement, when you hear something that you really would say yourself if you were up here, say amen. amen. Say it out loud. Let God hear it. Doesn't matter whether we hear it or not, but it matters that He hears it. And so in this pooling of our faith, we're going to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters unless you think they're only somewhere else in the world. They're here in our nation too. So let's lift them up to the Lord right now. Fathers, we bow before you. We bow as this part of your body, your son's body. And Lord, we thank you that as has already been said, we live in a community where we can pray when we can't do anything else because of our differences. Yes. And we ask you, Lord, to show us what we can do together in spite of our differences to be blessings to somebody in the neighborhood or another part of the town just because we're Jesus' people, no matter what the label is on our door. Yes. Father, we thank you for those who are standing standing where they have been run out and not permitted to speak because they wouldn't say something that the people there would address want to hear. We pray for those people, Father. And we pray for those who are being ridiculed today and called stupid and foolish and dumb just because they believe in Jesus and they're not trying to figure it all out for themselves. Lord, we thank you for telling us that the just shall live not by what we know, but by faith. Amen. And so, Father, we've already lifted up those who teach us so that we can know. And we pray for those who have taken you seriously and said, now, use it for my glory. And have been hurt 
have been abused, have been attacked in our own nation, have been attacked. Like the young lady who was just there in Charlottesville when the man backed his car into her. Totally unexpected and yet expected. Father, we pray for these people. We lift them up to you. And we ask you to move faithfully. For your word says you are good and you are merciful. And more than that, you're faithful. We trust you to protect them. Cause your angels to surround them. Hold them in safety. And when they get pressured, Father, give them grace to speak kindly or to remain silent patiently and to look up to you instead of up to the person and realize that if they would say the, the selfish thing, that would be the second wrong that never makes the first wrong right. Bless them, Lord. Hold them up. Hold them together. Give them that patience. Give them peace in the midst of the pressure. And for those around the world, Father, who had to watch while their children get beheaded, or who have watched their houses burn and, and have had to run off before they got shot themselves, Lord, we pray for them too, that you may hear from us and our brothers and sisters from New Jersey to California, from the Canadian line to the Gulf of Mexico, hear our brothers and sisters pray as we do that you'll bless the persecuted saints who remain saints and lastly father we pray for all of them those in our own community and those who are in our own land as well as those around the world father we ask you today to move not to let them give up to keep them solidly standing standing on the rock of jesus and declaring their faith in spite of all that comes against them. And we thank you that the amazing grace that has brought them as well as us already through dangers, toils, snares of the devil and will get us all the way home, will get them all the way home too. And we declare that you intend to do that and thank you for calling us to ask with the promise that it will not only be given but everyone who asks does receive yeah. and so we thank you for these things in advance and promise as has already been said to give you the praise give you the honor give you the glory as you say yes and bring these things to pass and so we say these things and thank you for every one of them as we say together in jesus name amen yeah. and now uh, welcome to reverend michael simmons Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It is a it is a blessing to be here. Matter of fact, there was uh as I was standing and listening to the prayers, standing in agreement with them, I was thinking there's two things that uh, that pierce me. One of them is just the fact that <coughs> excuse me <coughs> is that this is a national holiday, and it just blows my mind to think that all across this great nation is that at the same time that God's people are gathered together in prayer. And never, and it, that is a blessing in itself. And uh, something we can never give enough thanks for. But the one thing that, that hit me, that grieved me, is uh, as, as Chris Fisher has already said, I wish that uh, the people were lined up up Jefferson and they had to stop the traffic. It saddens me. But God is God and God is good yeah, all, the yeah, all the time. So I've been asked to, to pray for uh, morality and repentance today. And the thing that uh, hit me regarding the morality is that morality is the world's gauge <laughs> as to, to, to God's word, to what we stand on. The world looks at morality and says, this is good, this is okay, or that's not good. Or they really don't even care. Uh -huh. There, there is no gauge for them. But praise God, we have His Word, and His Word is what we stand on to say. This is what the Lord says about it, or this is what the Lord tells us to stay away from, and we are to bless them. So, 
I'm casting aside the issues of morality because it's society. It is the culture. It is the world's gauge. And I'm praying for hearts. Because God looks at the hearts of, of, his, of his children. He weighs them. He measures them. He gauges them. It is a plumb line by which God looks at us and sees us. And so I pray for hearts this day. For hearts and repentance, to hearts to be turned back. So let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are, you do look at our hearts, Lord God. As a matter of fact, your word says that uh, for, for the nation of Judah, Lord God, when they were taken into exile, you told the prophet, Lord God, that you would give your people a new heart, that you would take out their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. But at the same time, you also told them to seek out uh, to purify their hearts yeah. and to make it holy before you. So, Lord, we're asking that you would make our hearts holy, Lord God, as we stand before you this day and give our hearts unto you, Lord. And we know that all things, all matters of life and death pertain to issues in the heart, Lord God. Yeah. Everything is birthed in the heart and then it moves out into, the, into our conscious thinking and our actions and Lord God so we're asking you to purify our hearts Lord God that once that happens Lord God we know that we will return we will repent because your spirit has convicted us by the things that are in our hearts Lord God give us a new heart oh Lord God that we may as my brother said humble ourselves before you and seek your face Lord God and turn from our wicked ways Lord purify our hearts Lord God that we may return that we may turn in repentance Lord God and live according to the way that you have called us to live Lord God that we would love our neighbor as ourselves Lord God and that we would love one another Father that is what it's about that is what you're calling us to Lord God and righteousness and justice will flow like a river Lord God that is what we are seeking Lord God we are seeking a return to you We're, but we know that it will not happen until our hearts are right before you so Lord, we're asking you, Lord, to move upon our hearts and and let your spirit move upon this country, Lord God. Continue to bless it, we ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. And we will give you the glory and the honor which belongs unto you to start with, Lord God. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your beloved son. We thank you for that plan, Lord, of redemption which you put in place through him. And Father, we praise you and give you glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, if, if all of us and all Christians throughout this world, if we could come together in the unity of the Spirit, we would be the strongest nation that it has ever been. Because if, once we start separating ourselves into denominations, then we don't have the power no more. That's right. But we can feel the power of the Holy Ghost here today. So join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we, we thank you for allowing us to be here today. We thank you that your Spirit has spoken through each and every one of us today and, and through those out there. Oh Lord, uh, people are such an inspiration that when, when a pastor gets up to, uh, to speak or, or to teach, it's the people that God works through that brings him, him the words that he, that he wants us to say. So Lord, I would ask for each and every one of us as we leave here today, let us all be colored blind because God is not a respecter of any persons. Let us be colored blind. And if we're all going to be as one, one glorious day, we better start learning how today. Hallelujah. So let us all leave here today and bless somebody in, in, in Jesus' holy name and in his word. And let us all leave here and go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God, for this mighty blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.